if you're not careful and you no clip out of reality in the wrong areas, you will end up in the back rooms, where it's nothing but the stink of old, moist carpet, the madness of mono yellow, the endless background noise of fluorescent lights at maximum humbuzz, and approximately 600 million square miles of randomly segmented empty rooms to be trapped in. God save you if you hear something wandering around nearby, because it sure as hell has heard you. Level 29 Hyperion Survival Difficulty Class 4 Unsafe Unsecure Undocumented Entities Level 29 is the 30th level of the backrooms. It is our home and our heaven, and the island residing within it may never be disturbed. Description Hidden on the vast oceans of Outer Level 29, our island stands, and within it, a new civilization embraces a new future. The island itself is delimited by rough cliffs and sharp, steep slopes of rock and metal, which act as a natural barrier against outside dangers. On the inside, tall and robust arrays of mountains protect those living within the island, and also act as a fresh source of almond water which flows off the mountainside and forms long and wide rivers. For the oceans which surround our nations, we call them the outer areas of level 29. For the areas of our island that are not protected by our mountains, we call them the outer circle of level 29. Finally, for the areas of our island that are protected by our mountains, we call them the inner circle of level 29. Between the mountains, Small settlements surrounded by large farms dominate the landscape and form a beautiful array of crop fields. Small huts located between them produce a stable income of food for the small towns. Housing the majority of the population of our island, these small towns, of which buildings are mainly made out of wood, provide not only a shelter for our people, but also provide us with a foundation and a ground layer for future development of this civilization. In the outer circle of level 29, small huts and watchtowers can commonly be seen at elevated places, like hills and cliffs, and provide us with yet another layer of protection against any outside dangers. The areas outside of the island are deemed too dangerous for anyone to traverse through and, commonly, sightings of strange and enormous entities are reported. Given such, our island's protection is, and always has been, our number one priority protection of which ensures that our people may live in peace and prosperity, safe from any threats and safe from any corrupt minds. Anything ahead of the boundaries of our island is deemed a dead zone, for it is both unsafe, risky, and lethal to venture through. Together with the aforementioned sightings of strange, gigantic entities, so does the ocean itself act as a barrier and a threat due to its anomalous properties, which can, at worst, destroy entire vessels and break apart even the strongest boats made by our people. Unfortunately, the only way to exit the level is also by traversing through this vast ocean, which was proven by wanderers in the past, before the waters became a danger to us. Footnote. Presumably, hundreds of years ago, the ocean did not contain any anomalous properties, nor did it contain any dangerous entities, based on written documents by wanderers who once lived in level 29. Given that the entire population of the level is stuck forever in here, many have devoted their lives to creating a steady, firm, and strong foundation for a new, glorious, powerful, and thriving civilization in the back rooms. Using a special wood from trees which can only be found in level 29, our buildings are not only fireproof but also extremely sturdy and resistant, for this special wood is stronger than most construction materials used by humans. Based on a lonely and isolated ideology, most of the population has developed their own tactics and concepts to overcome the most common struggles in nowadays society. Some have given up on the idea of a government at all, and act under a friendly and well-maintained governmentless society. Others have adopted many concepts of famous ideologies, shaping them to their own needs and requirements, and creating a thriving new form of government. It should be noted that none of these awkward and strange rules have been put in place, devoid of any conflicts, and it should also be noted that conflicts are common. We, humans, 
are not perfect, regardless of how much we try to perfect our lifestyle. Hyperia, located in the heart of our island, protected by yet another natural barrier in the form of a dense forest, is our main settlement, Hyperia. Acting as the main hub between our different settlements and ideologies, it should be treated as a gathering station, and not a capital, for each different society has its own capital city. Filled to its very limits with resources and important infrastructure, this moderately sized city is nothing short of a gigantic industrial complex, where all trading and exchanges pass through. Given that the hub is also located in the very middle of the island, perfectly fitting between all other major settlements and societies, and allowing for quick and easy trade routes between them, most societies have agreed to use the hub as their main outpost for other reasons than initially thought and planned. As mentioned, even though the hub was initially created with the idea of uniting all the trade and commerce on the island, some of the infrastructure present in the settlement comes in the form of giant office-like buildings, which act as a diplomatic station and headquarters for many of our societies. However, not all societies accept Hyperia as the main hub of the island, and instead prefer to use their own infrastructure and towns for the same purposes. Devoid of any restrictions, any society is free to decide what to do with their own goods, and no other should get in their way. Demographics, Diplomacy, and Resources Currently, there are around 25,000 inhabitants of level 29, divided into approximately 250 different societies slash nations. Of these 25,000 inhabitants, at least 17,000 are non-human. As for the island itself, it has the approximate size of 2,166,000 kilometers squared, 836,297 miles squared, and is, for the most part, habitable, save for the mountainous regions and the coastline, which are not suitable for human presence, and contain, for the most part, dangerous terrains and lethal temperatures. Most nations slash societies do not have a formal name, and are referred to as Wanderer Nations. With this, it is hard to determine the exact population and wealth of every nation, for there is no defined record-keeping law, and most nations tend to keep any records to themselves. Many of these settlements are located in secured areas protected by nature, but some settlements also take advantage of the altitude of the mountains, and create settlements there. These mountains make up most of the landmass of the island, or around 56% of it, with the rest being forests, plains, hills, and small caves. Resources are extremely abundant in these caves, specifically iron and copper, which appear in giant ore veins. Furthermore, the island is home to a unique type of tree. Red in color, usually thick and tall with white leaves, its wood is even stronger than aluminum. Sea resources are not explored due to the dangers present in the ocean, but it is believed that there is a great abundance of fish and other waterborne fauna and flora. Local Fauna and Flora Animals common to the front rooms are also common to level 29, however, with slight changes, which come in the form of different physical appearance and benign genetic modifications. Footnote: Presumably from the different and unique aspects these animals have, as no proper scientific test has been made yet. These include land and sea living beings, which come in great abundance in level 29, and aid our thriving and growing population. Together with the vast and complex amount of fauna present in the level, so is the level's flora a miracle of nature. Unique flowers and trees make up most of this vivid and colorful flora, which dominates some of the inner landscape of the island and paint some of the hilled terrains in colorful shades of numerous colors, sometimes creating rainbows. The trees of this level are, on their own, a miracle of nature as well, for their absurd, yet critical, properties that allow them to be even stronger and sturdier than most metals used by humans. Although easily cut using a typical axe, when processed through a specific chemical process, this wood can become one of the strongest materials ever known to humankind. The Kraken, hidden in the depths of level 29, waiting to be woken up, lies the Kraken, a giant, octopus-like entity the size of the island, with tentacles that stretch on for large distances. Seen during deep-sea exploration conducted by various societies, this entity is not only dangerous to the population and ecosystem of the level, 
but it also poses a threat to the rest of the back rooms, for it could theoretically no clip out of the level, the same way wanderers could. Asleep in the depths of the ocean and far from our island, the Kraken induces a magnetic field around it that pulls anything close to it, creating something in close resemblance with a whirlpool where nothing can escape from it. Any boats passing by will never return back, for the force of the whirlpool is stronger than anything wanderers have seen before. This, together with the vast dangers of the ocean itself and the entities residing within it, poses a significant hazard to those venturing into the deep sea. Entities Aside from the deadly and harmful entities present in the ocean of the level, there are no harmful entities on the island itself. Friendly entities are then common on the island, and consist of humanoid creatures that closely resemble wanderers. Due to the lack of equipment and fear of losing personnel, no further exploration of the seas has been made, and all results show only a fraction of what is believed to be a unique ecosystem of entities never seen before. Aside from the Kraken, no other entity has been thoroughly documented, but there is an estimated 200 entities unique to level 29 that all reside in the ocean of the level. Bases, communities, and outposts. Hundreds of nations slash societies exist within level 29. Even though they are not diplomatically unified as one, the entire population of the island can be grouped into a community. Population of level 29. Around 25,000 inhabitants. Deep variety of simple and complex governments and societies. Vast collection of different nations, ideologies, and groups. Mostly friendly to new wanderers. Comprised mostly of unaligned wanderers with no relation to major groups. Entrances and Exits Entrances To enter level 29, one must traverse far beyond level 7's ocean. When the sky turns into a pale pink color, and the water is bathed by the everlasting sun, you have reached level 29. Not long after, you will find yourself in one of the dockyards built around the area where wanderers first arrive when they enter the level, and, most likely, you will be greeted by representatives of different societies slash nations. Exits The only exit known in level 29 is available through traveling far beyond the limits of the level itself, which can be done by sailing for multiple days away from the island, as reported. However, and due to the current properties of the water, this exit is almost impossible to achieve, and all attempts result in the death of the wanderers. Even so, one would theoretically end up in level 114, or level 284. Footnote: Based on earlier documents made by wanderers, when the oceans were not a risk. 